How you doing? I'm Darren with Ash Kick and Barbecue. If this is your first time to the channel, then welcome. If you've been here before, then welcome back. Today we are talking smoked brisket, more specifically smoked brisket on a pellet grill, and I'm gonna show you how you can nail your smoked briskets every single time using my method. You know, I've been using it for quite a while. I've really struggled with briskets for a long time, but I'm gonna cover everything today from trimming to seasoning to the cook to ensuring that is that perfect tenderness. You know, smoked brisket is often intimidating, especially for people cooking their first one, but it doesn't have to be. It's very simple, cook to color, cook to tenderness, you're gonna have a great brisket. So let's get you in and show you how we're gonna get this brisket prepped up. It's probably gonna be a little bit longer of a video, but I don't wanna skip any details. And again, I promise you, if you follow these steps, you're going to have a great brisket every single time. Now let's jump into it. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna go over is how to trim this brisket. This is about an 18, almost 19 pound brisket I got from Costco. Had it in my freezer for a little while. You can see it's got a very nice thick flat. It's a very nice looking brisket. And I'm just gonna show you kind of what I'm looking for when I pick out a brisket. You can see we have some good marbling within this flat right here, which is really nice. The flat is what people seem to have the most issues with as far as it being dry and whatever else. So I like to get one with a nice thick flat if I can, uniform across, nice marbling you can see these fibers are kind of loose I, li I actually like that it's gonna be a nice tender brisket and then on the bottom side I'm just looking for a complete fat cap coverage if I'm gonna take anything off I want to be the one to take it off you can see we have a little bit of straggliness here from the mohawk on the side so I'm gonna show you how I like to trim briskets. Now, I am a little more aggressive than most when it comes to trimming briskets, so if you don't wanna take as much off as I do, feel free not to, but I like to have the best slices of brisket I can at home and the best quality of brisket I can at home. So I think by having a nice trim that's gonna allow for a good cook is a first step in that situation. So I'm just gonna take my little boning knife here this is a Shun, I'll have a link down below if you're interested in it. These aren't cheap, but they are fantastic. And the first thing I like to do is kind of try and come in and take out this big chunk of deckle fat. And I'm gonna try and show you everything I can on camera. So if things are a little weird, that's why I typically trim a little bit different way, but I wanna kind of show you guys what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna come in, make small cuts. Small cuts equals small mistakes and just take it right on out of there. Just peel it and it'll start to go on its own. I'm just gonna take this out like so. You can see that is just a big chunk of fat. It's never gonna render down. I don't wanna leave it. I know some people don't trim their briskets at all. That's cool, but I don't wanna serve this to my guests and I don't wanna eat this myself. So you can save this, render it down for tallow. If you guys wanna see a video on how I do my tallow, let me know down in the comments. But for now, I'm gonna set this off to the side. I might save this for sausage because I do like to use a little beef fat with sausage. So I'm gonna set that off. Then you can kinda see that's kind of what we're left with. We still have some fat in there, but we're gonna get to that in a little while. The next thing we're gonna do is you can kind of see this discoloration in the meat right here. That's just from processing, kind of steam causes that, I believe. So I wanna take that off, but I don't wanna cheat myself over, so I'm taking out a huge chunk of the brisket. The only thing I wanna do is just come in and maybe take off a quarter inch, somewhere along those lines. And I just come in and I go straight up and that's gonna allow me to see the fat cap that we're working with right here too. So I'll get that set off to the side. And then I'm just gonna come in here and take this part off, like so. Now you can see we're kinda getting down there. I'm just gonna come in and scoop a little bit more of this out. And I do cook my brisket's fat cap down because my heat source on my pellet grill is down, so I use the fat to protect the meat. If you wanna cook fat cap up, go for it. This is just what I do and I've had good success with it. And you know, I'm telling you right now, you might be questioning some of the things I'm gonna tell you in this video, but if you just give it a try and you follow it, you're gonna have a great pellet grill brisket every single time. All right, so the next thing I like to do is just kind of come in and shave down the fat on the surface 
of the meat. And because I cook fat cap down, I wanna get a nice bark on top here. So I'm just gonna shave a little bit down. I'm trying not to gouge into the flat. You can see I got a little bit of meat, but there's fat right there. And you wanna follow the grain of the meat when you do this. It's just gonna make it a lot easier to get this trimmed down. You're not gonna have like gouges in it. If you go this way, it's just a lot easier and a lot better presentation if you just follow the grain of the brisket as you're trimming it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this top fat cleared off. All right, so I have a lot of the top fat taken off. I'm gonna come back to that and touch up anything else if I need to, but for right now, that's looking good. So next thing I'm gonna do is flip this brisket over. And right here, you can see this huge piece of flat meat, the mohawk on there. This isn't gonna do any good. It's just gonna burn up. I don't want it on there. So I'm just gonna come in, and I'm just gonna take that completely off like so. And you can see there's a lot of fat and a lot of marbling within this point. So it's gonna be able to take that heat from the cooker on there without drying out. And you can see that is the Mohawk. Now you can save this, use it for burger grind, use it for sausage grind. I do a lot of sausage with pork and brisket. So I just did a batch the other day. I cooked about 52 links. If you wanna see a video on that, let me know. It turned out fantastic, but don't waste this. It's good grind. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. This part right here is just kind of hanging out. I'm just gonna take that off. I just wanna have everything kind of even, no sharp edges, no nothing, just nice and aerodynamic. And things are looking pretty good. It's starting to come together here. And this right here, you can see more fat down in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna take that down a little bit more, like so. And that's gonna allow us to get some of this fat out right here if we wanted to. We don't wanna to take too much and ruin the integrity of the brisket, but we'll get back to that in a second. And then at this point, I'm just coming in and I'm taking everything down to about a quarter of an inch for fat. And you can see right there, we have a nice thick fat cap. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make some small cuts. Like I said, small cuts, small mistakes. If you start hitting meat, just back out and adjust your knife angle. You don't want to cut into the meat if you don't have to. So we're just going to even this out. All right, so you can see we're kind of getting down to about a quarter of an inch here, maybe a little bit heavier, but I want to flip this over and just kind of see how we're looking up top here. We're looking pretty good. I'm just going to take right here you can see there's a fat seam right here and it looks like it's part of the point but it's actually not so i'm just going to take that down and again that's good grind meat so make sure you save that i'm just going to trim the fat along this back side of the point just so we can get some good bark all right so this is kind of just what i took down right here you can see we still have a hefty fat cap right there i'm gonna get working on that but you can start to see here this fat cap that we originally trimmed down this decal fat is still kind of right there but it's starting to loosen up now and i can actually get my hands in there or my fingers in there rather and i'm just gonna take and dig that out like so just like that and again big chunk of fat nobody wants to eat that on their brisket we want to leave some fat on there but we don't need to leave a big chunk like that I'm just gonna even some of this out right here and I will say under this glove I have a cut proof glove which is really nice if your knife slips it's gonna help save your hands a little bit and I trim quite a bit of meat so having that on there is really nice it's just an added layer of protection it's not cut proof it's cut resistant but it saved me a few times which uh, is really nice because i like having all my fingers so things are starting to happen here things are starting to come along i'm just going to take some of that out and that's looking pretty good we got a nice flat now right here i did say this is a nice thick flat but right here is a little thinner so all i want to do is just kind of see how this is gonna play out. So I can tell it's thinner down here, it starts getting thicker back into here. So I'm just gonna come in 
and take that out like so. Again, really nice grind meat, sausage, burger, whatever. Save this, don't throw it away. And then I just wanna kinda shape this brisket, make sure there's no sharp edges, kinda round everything out. Take care of this side right here. Get that straightened out. And I just wanna round off this corner right here. And this little piece is kinda hanging up. It's just gonna dry out. I'm just gonna shave that down like so. And that is looking like a pretty decent brisket. I'm just gonna check the other side here. We still have a decent amount of fat over here, so I'm just gonna take that down a little bit. All right, so there's our brisket. You can see it's looking really nice. Get this flipped over. And it's probably about 14 pounds now, but it's a 14 pound good trim brisket. And I'm really happy with how this looks. We're gonna get maximum slices out of this flat. We're gonna get nice burnt ends. So this is kind of how I like to trim. Like I said, I know it's a little more aggressive than most. And if you don't wanna trim it like this, you certainly don't have to. Do what makes you happy, do what you like. But for me, I like to have nice slices going throughout. I like people to have nice slices going throughout and for me this is just kind of the ideal trim it's a little bit right here is a little bit hanging off so I'm just gonna take that little section off like so and for me that's about the perfect brisket trim for an at-home eating brisket this is kind of how I like to do it like I said make it your own do what you like to do but we got a good amount of fat on there. We got good marbling. It's gonna be tender. We got a nice brisket that we started with to begin with. So everything is looking real nice. So at this point, we're gonna talk about the seasoning. And I'm just gonna show you the trim that I have. There's a lot of fat, there's some good meat. It's gonna make good burger. I haven't bought burger in forever because I trim so many briskets. I just take and you know, grind up and have my own burger that way. But this is looking like a really nice brisket, and this is what I wanna roll with. So now let's go ahead and get it seasoned up. Now, before we talk about seasoning, we have to talk about binders. Now, a lot of people use a mustard binder. I'm not a big fan of using any sort of binder because I don't think you really need it. This meat is sticky enough, it's gonna hold the seasoning. Now, a lot of the big barbecue places use a binder because they're trimming their brisket days in advance. It's sitting in a refrigerator with convection. It's drying out the surface. So they need a little something just to get that rub to stick. I don't prefer it. It's not ideal for me. And so I'm just gonna roll with no binder. And the very first thing I like to come in with is table grind black pepper. And I just want a nice even coat on the fat cap. And I like a really peppery brisket, so I go a little bit heavier. If you wanna go lighter, then go for it, but it's not gonna be super spicy. It's gonna spend time in the smoker. It's gonna cook down. So we'll just get that patted in. You can see it's a nice even application. We don't wanna bury the thing. We don't wanna have it too heavy in one spot or another. And I can kinda see we're a little light right there. So there we go. That is our first layer of seasoning, which is the black pepper. Now the next thing I'm coming in with is the Tailgaters Barbecue Party Rub. This is my go-to brisket recipe. The extra black pepper and the Tailgaters Barbecue is a fantastic combination. It's an award-winning combination. I did really well at the American Royal last year in the brisket category on day two. Got a seventh place overall out of about 500 teams. And a lot of that has to do with this Tailgaters Barbecue Party Rub. It is just a phenomenal flavor on brisket. This is what I use for catering. This is what I use at home. This is my perfect brisket recipe. It's very nice and beefy. So I just wanna get that fat cap seasoned up. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna repeat the same process on the top side. And this is my presentation side, so I wanna make sure everything looks really nice. Little black pepper. Don't forget your edges. And there we go, this black pepper is gonna help with our bark formation. And then we're just gonna come in with the party rub and a nice even application. This is a super savory rub. It's got some Worcestershire powder in it, so it adds a really nice beefy flavor to the meat. Get our edges. 
And this is a big piece of meat. It can handle a lot of seasoning. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of go pretty heavy with it. And since we're only using the tailgaters, we're not gonna oversalt it. And it's just gonna add a really, really, really nice flavor. So I get that all patted in. And I want to talk a little bit about the cook here. So I come straight from the refrigerator, trim. It's easier to trim when it's nice and cold. And I like to get it out on the smoker when it's nice and cold. Typically I'll season this the night before, late the night before, get it on early in the morning. That way it has a chance to sit, but today we're not doing that. And I just want to make sure we have even seasoning here. So I'm going to be cooking on the Lone Star Grill's pellet grill today and I'm gonna be running at 300 degrees. And I know a lot of you are gonna say that that's really hot and you can't get a good smoke flavor on there. And that's just not true. Uh, the Lone Star Grills Pellet Grill is a fantastic pellet grill. It smokes at high temperatures. And the reason I'm doing this is number one, because I don't have a lot of time today to get this brisket done. And number two, I really think that if you're just starting out cooking brisket and you wanna nail it every time, cooking a little bit hotter is gonna be a better result for you than going low and slow. I I think 225 is too low on briskets. I think 250 would be acceptable. I think 275 is probably that happy medium between low and slow and hot and fast. So if you're comfortable at 275, you know, go ahead and cook that. Your tenderness might be a little bit different as far as your timeline. It's gonna be a little bit longer, but for me, I get this on the cooker, I let it smoke until I have the bark that I'm looking for. I don't care about the temperature. It's usually about 170 to 180 internal. I get it wrapped up and I cook it until it's tender, which for me typically is about 210 degrees in dead center in the flat, but it does vary, especially depending on the grade of meat you're cooking. You know, Wagyu is gonna be different, Prime's gonna be different, Select Choice, all that's gonna be different. But typically when I get it wrapped, I'm putting in a thermometer dead center. I set an alarm for 210 and that's when I go out and I start checking for tenderness and I do not pull it off the cooker until it's probing tender. I'm gonna show you what that looks like today. So this is a nice brisket. Like I said, this is kind of my process. Feel free to change whatever you want, but I'm just showing you how if you follow this video, you are going to nail the pellet grill brisket every single time. I have no doubt about it. So I'm gonna get the Lone Star Grills fired up to 300 degrees and I'll meet you outside at the cooker. All right, so we are out at the Lone Star Grills pellet grill. We have it set for 300 degrees. You can see I have the point towards the firebox, which is over here. Really nice rub application on there, nice black pepper. So we're just gonna shut this thing down and let it go for three, four hours before we check it. I'm just gonna maintain 300 degrees. Come back in three hours and show you how it's looking. Take it internal, let you know. But yeah, this is gonna be a fantastic brisket. Looks really nice. So we'll see you in about three hours. All right, so we are three hours into this cook. You can see we are starting to get some nice color, nice color up here on the point. Nothing's looking too dry or crispy. It's starting to sweat a little bit. So I'm guessing we're gonna be in that 150-ish range. We're just gonna come dead center and 150, Point eight. So we still have some time to go before we are going to wrap this up. You can see we have some awesome smoke rolling, even at 300 on the Lone Star Grills. So I'm gonna say probably another hour, hour and a half, we'll come out and check it. Bark is looking nice, but yeah, it's coming along nicely. So I'm just gonna let this thing keep rolling. And like I said, nice, easy, perfect brisket on the pellet grill every time. Let's go. We will see you in about an hour, hour and a half. All right, so it has been another hour and a half and you can see brisket starting to get some really nice color. Still got some sweating going on here. I'm just gonna check it. We're sitting at 166.1, but we are looking good. We're starting to get the really nice color. I just want this to go a little bit longer and start drying off this surface. So that way when we wrap, we're not gonna be washing off our bark here. So I'm gonna let this thing go and I'll come back and check in and let you know how long it's been. I'm guessing probably another hour or so. We just need to break through that stall and it shouldn't last long cooking at 300 degrees like this, but still got some wonderful smoke rolling. So I'll be back when it's time to wrap and I'll let you know how long it's been. We'll see you then. All right, so it has been another hour. You can see this brisket is looking fantastic. We have some beautiful bark going on here. Nice juices flowing. That evaporative cooling process has started to end. We're sitting at about 173 degrees, but more importantly, this brisket is looking exactly how I want it. This is where I want to wrap it. So I'm gonna get this inside. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna wrap this. We'll get it back out and we'll finish it off. It won't take long now. It's been about five hours on here and it is looking absolutely fantastic. I will meet you in the house. 
All right, so you can see I have two pieces of aluminum foil here. I like to wrap with aluminum foil just to speed up the process a little bit. I've kept them in pans before, like the one I have the brisket in now. I've just added some beef consomme in there, wrapped them up with a little foil on top. That works fantastic. But for the sake of keeping it simple here today, we're just going to wrap in foil. I'm not gonna be adding anything to the wrap. Usually I do add some consomme. You can add beef broth, beer, anything like that. But in the sake of keeping this simple and easy and turning out the perfect brisket, we're just gonna do nothing in the wrap, let that tallow render itself and create some nice jus that way. So, we're just gonna get this brisket dead center, right in the middle there. And you can see we have a beautiful color on here. We have a beautiful bark. This is gonna be fantastic. And I know a lot of people don't like wrapping in foil because they say it ruins their bark. I haven't had that issue, and now there's a little trick I'm gonna show you after this thing is done on how to preserve this bark. So let's go ahead and get this wrapped up. All right, and there's our brisket. We're just gonna keep this wrapped up nice and tight, get it back out on the cooker. I'll bring you back when it's time to check it, let you know how long it's been. We'll probably check it in about an hour and uh, see where it's at, but it won't take long now. Nice, tight package here. So I'm gonna get this back out onto the cooker. All right, so it's been about another hour. We're sitting at about six-ish hours on this cook. I am just going to get a leave-in probe in at this point and kind of see where this brisket's at here. And right now we're sitting at approximately 185 degrees. So we got a little bit of time. Now I have my alarm on this Thermalworks smoke set for 210 degrees in the thickest part of the flat. That's usually where I know my briskets are going to be good. I'll come out, verify with the thermometer that it's nice and tender. It's not so much time and temp as it is feel, but 210 seems to get me in the ballpark of where my tenderness needs to be. So I'll bring you back, let you know how long it's been when we hit 210 degrees and we'll see in a little bit. I cannot wait to try this brisket. So yeah, we'll see you at 210 degrees. All right, so it's been about another hour, hour and a half. We're eight hours exactly into this cook time, and I'm pretty sure this brisket is done. So I'm just gonna open this up. We're just gonna double check it with the instant read thermometer. And at this point, we're just checking straight tenderness. All right, so there we have a good look at it, and we're just gonna go in. And it is probing real nice. You can see when I pull up, there's no resistance. We're sitting at 210, 211. That is feeling really, really good. Very nice, very tender. So at this point, we're gonna get this inside and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do to make sure that we get this nice bark to come back because it is looking a little soft right now, but don't worry, we will bring that back. So I'm gonna get this in the house and I'll meet you inside and I'll show you the last step before we go ahead and let this rest for an hour or two hours. All right, so to get our bark back here, all we're gonna do is just let this steam off for about 15 minutes. That's all we need. We wanna let all the steam get out of there. So when we wrap it up, it won't keep cooking. But what that's gonna do is it's gonna help reset all this bark to like it is right here. We're gonna have nice bark on there. So 15 minutes on the clock, I'll bring you back, get it wrapped up, and then it's just a waiting game to let it rest because we want this thing to be perfect. All right, so it has been 15 minutes on the nose and you can see bark has set up nicely, looking good, nothing's coming off. So I'm gonna get this brisket wrapped up. I'm gonna let it rest for probably about an hour and a half to two hours. We'll slice into it. I mean, the biggest thing is just making sure it's not piping hot. We're still sitting at 196 right now after having it open for 15 minutes. I'd like to get it down to like 145, but that is looking good. I can't wait to try it. Just get it wrapped up and I'll see you when it's time to slice into this. All right, so we've gone ahead and let this brisket rest for a little bit and it is down to about 152 degrees, if you can see that there. 154, somewhere in there. So that's as far as I'm gonna take it. If you really wanted to do it right, rest it down to about 145, then slice into it. But this is close enough for me for an at-home eater brisket. I'm just gonna get that opened up. And that is looking real nice. Get a little of the dripping on there to shine it up, make it look real nice. Oh heck, let's just, there we go. Get that dripping on there, that tallow. Yeah, that is looking fantastic. Check that out. 
Really nice looking brisket. That looks wonderful. All right, so I'm just going to slice right down the middle and we're gonna take a look and see how we did. Probably about right there. Get that up. Looks really good. Moist in there. Looks cooked proper. Feels super tender. Tons of juice in there. That looks really nice. Yeah, that's a nice looking fatty piece right there. Let's go ahead and check out the lean. Also looks really nice, super tender. Just gonna get a few slices out of here. That's a nice looking piece of lean right there. Super tender, just pulls apart effortlessly. Hopefully the camera's picking up that moisture. But yeah, that is a perfectly cooked brisket. Super tender, just dangling. Could have maybe gone a little bit longer. It just feels a, maybe a hair tight. Grain ran a little funny on here, so it's not perfectly against the grain, but it's still very, very tender. Look at that. Beautiful piece of fatty right here. All the fat is rendered nicely. I mean, it is just super tender, holding up under its own weight, but man, we just pull it right apart. That is awesome. And take these off here. Nice little burnt ends. Look at that. Just beautiful looking morsel. So tender, so juicy. Beautiful. Just the slightest squeeze and it's gonna fall apart and shred exactly how a brisket should be. Just perfect. Nice bark. And then this little piece right here, I'll just take what I can for slices, but usually I'm gonna end up chopping this and use it for tacos or something like that. Cause I mean, it's so tender, you can just go ahead and kind of break it up. And this part here makes wonderful tacos. Highly recommend that. All right guys, there's only one thing left for us to do and that is to try our brisket. So tender, cheers. It's incredibly beefy, it's incredibly tender. That Tailgater's Barbecue Party Rub Bark is just my favorite on brisket. Perfect eater brisket. It is so, so good and I love the lean, but we're gonna try a piece of this burnt end here. Look at that, so tender, so barky. Cheers. Guys, this is absolutely fantastic. There's a reason that this is my favorite eater brisket. Yeah, I mean, just so tender. Just beautiful, beautiful. Probably could have taken a little more fat off the bottom right there, but hey, that's okay. So guys, if you're looking for an easy, simple, and delicious brisket recipe that you can nail every time on your pellet cooker, this is it. I highly recommend giving it a try. If you do, be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, stay safe, and we will see you next time.